Hey folks, Quillidine here and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Democracy 4 as Canada here! Oh man, we've got a run that, uh, well I mean so far we're making a little bit of progress I think on our plans. Um, we've got tons of issues still still going on. Uh, we are totally not going to get re-elected if we had an election now, but it makes sense. We haven't actually had time to really implement our policy. Um, we did make a crack in our deficit theoretically in the last episode. We decided to cut back on military spending, uh, and we're still hoping that overall our economy becomes a little bit stronger. Our GDP is pretty good. I guess we're not going to get a whole heck of a lot of extra money from higher GDP. If we did want to raise money, we could increase some taxes in a few areas, which is something to consider. Um, hmm. We could go ahead and just boost our carbon tax. What's interesting with this is it does boost energy efficiency, which has a big effect on a lot of things, but it does upset everyone. So it's not terribly good for our economy, or sorry, not terribly good for electability, but I was just looking down at the income. And it's like, oh yeah, we can, we can actually raise quite a bit of extra money with a carbon tax. Okay, I'm gonna run this for a little bit and see what happens. It might backfire, but this is gonna be a big quarter for us to boost our overall income. So I'll raise it as much as I can with our political capital. I don't I don't necessarily want to have gone any higher than that, just on the basis that um, uh, it, it, it might piss off too many people. Um, and then maybe if I want to go and tweak the secularity to the max, what do I need? I need 39, 36, which we actually can't even bank that much. Oh, that's not true. We can actually bank more now than we used to. I think our, our minister's experience is growing. I mean, we could boost it a little bit, I suppose, if we got a bunch of points and basically did only that next turn. Eco home regulations. More energy efficiency. More environmentalists. You know what? I'm gonna spend the last of my political capital on this. Excellent, okay. We had a little bit left, but that's gonna be all right. Stricter driving tests. So there are calls to toughen up driving test regime to ensure dri new drivers are much better prepared for road conditions and improve driver safety. We can toughen up the tests. The current driving tests may have been fine when cars went 20 miles an hour and before six lane highways existed, but times have changed. Drivers are increasingly distracted by mobile phones, can drive staggeringly fast vehicles in all weather conditions with virtually no experience. For the sake of many children run over and killed each year, we need tougher tests, or we can make no changes. There's no need for change. If anything, cars are getting safer each year thanks to modern technology, such as collision detection and crash safety programs. That's true. Cross safety system, sorry. It already costs a fortune to take for and takes forever to pass the driving test. This would just be a burden for new young drivers. I actually this is a is a tough question because the problem is they're not getting into any specifics as to what the changes would be. Um I'll make no change and see what that does. So parents aren't happy, motorists are happy. We do have a good number of motorists, if I recall correctly. Yeah, it's actually like virtually everyone in our country are motorists. So if we can keep the motorists happy, that will do good things for election. Now, there are some crossovers between motorists and um, environmental things because... Um, unless we're already running it. Well, biofuel subsidies do make motorists happy. I guess this might have been what I was thinking. There's a, there's a couple others. There's like fuel efficiency. Oh, fuel efficiency standards over here make motorists happy. Oh, actually, it increased their income. I think before it used to directly boost their happiness. Now it's going to do it like probably via their income here. Because if the cars require less fuel, then they have to pay less at the pumps. So it's going to upset the capitalists. Again, we do have a lot of capitalists, and we're going to have to keep an eye on that. Um, it also boosts car usage, which isn't good for certain things, but theoretically it's gonna be offset by the lower oil demand and CO2 emissions. Because more cars equals more oil demand and CO2 emissions, but we can drop it over here. It keeps making environmentalists happy, which is a fairly large group of people who don't love me too much. Um, and it will, it actually doesn't affect the environment directly, but the lowered CO2, CO2 emissions will. And yeah, it should overall make the motorists happy and motorists being the literal largest block of voters in our country, that seems like it will take a long time to have an impact. I guess you can just keep referring to these uh, fuel efficiency standards. I see with the gear, that's actually really cool. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Oh, I guess I gotta close you first. Um, and then if I can do the biofuel subsidies as well, I think that's gonna be very good. Yeah, we'll, we'll crank up the subsidies to the max. Oil demand goes down, CO2 emissions go down. Food prices go up, yes. So this is actually a thing, right? Because if farmers are growing corn for turning into ethanol, as opposed to using that land to grow food for people, then that will increase food prices. Still, 
I think we're going to go ahead and do this. Our effectiveness is pretty low on that particular uh, advisor, which is uh, unfortunate. Uh, we've basically eliminated the deficit by raising the carbon tax and cutting our military spending a little. We've basically eliminated our deficit, which is nice to do. It'd be great if we started running a surplus so we can bring debt down so that we didn't have to spend as much on our debt interest payments over here. Um, now, as, assuming that we don't lose credit rating, uh, this is going to remain manageable. The problem is if you lose credit rating, then all of a sudden your interest levels go up like crazy and everything spirals terribly bad. Could save a lot of money by cutting state pensions, but I don't think we're going to do that. I don't know if there's any other changes I need to make right at the moment. Pollution is slightly going down. Not enough to make a difference, though. And more people are becoming environmental protesters. Probably because we're actually generating more environmentalists. But it's possible that the environment... Well, it's just sitting at 0%. Okay. Thanks to our amazing GDP, mostly. Oh, attend gay wedding. So a super popular celebrity is getting married. You're invited as one of the guests, which would normally not be in any way controversial, but it's a same-sex couple, and the celebrity is well-known to advocate for LGBT rights. Will you attend? Of course we'll attend. Sure. Liberals are happy. Religious are unhappy. Situation imminent. Cyber warfare. Ooh, and that's going up. That is definitely going up. I think this is something we're going to have to deal with. Ooh, that is... And it's a, a slightly larger range between the start and stop than some of the others. Uh, so we'd have to work really hard to bring it down below the stop trigger over here. Um, improving our foreign relations helps to do that. Military spending will help to fight that. Uh, we can also just boost our intelligence services, which may in fact be the better way in this particular situation. Okay, first of all, let's take a quick look to see if there's a policy we might want to run that could tweak it. I don't see anything in here. I can't imagine anything taxes or public services. I want to run a few of these. Oh man, public libraries. Yeah, I want to run this because this is really good, but let's wait on that a second because I really don't want this to start. So what we might need to do is increase, and I'm looking for the symbol. I mean, there's wiretapping. There might be a specific like internet. All right, so that's community policing. That's cameras. That's gender transition. It's interesting that's under law and order as opposed to like public services. I don't know. Drug enforcement, illegal aid, legalized sex work, firearms, gambling, intellectual property rights. I have a hard time imagining that will affect um, cyber warfare. Press freedom, prisoner tagging, prisons, narcotics, that's the intellectual rights, big game, alcohol law, intelligence services. This definitely will. So increasing this will increase our cost, although it doesn't go up like, you know, from eight... Yeah, it's actually not boosting it that much. It does upset the liberals a lot, and we do have a lot of liberals in our country. Um, it doesn't, otherwise it doesn't seem to have a big impact, but behind the scenes, this is an impact on our security, of like not getting me assassinated, as well as, um, as well as, I think fighting cybercrime. So I'm not gonna go to spy satellite network. I will stay in what it's called the high tech spy service range, which thematically sounds about right. Let's boost it to here. We'll spend four political capital to bring it over there. It's going to add a fair amount of money. It's going to piss off the liberals a little bit. But what I'm hoping is that this will have mostly an effect on some of our defenses over here. Interesting that intelligence services isn't actually one of these categories. Huh. Oh, no, there it is. Duh. Okay. I think improving wiretapping would also cut down on some of those things, but it gets expensive. Are these little ticks? Oh! This is interesting. It's not, yeah, this is just changing the law. Police chief of consent, police request. It lowers corruption. It lowers membership in liberalism. It also doesn't really cost anything. You know what? Screw it. Slightly uh, Orwellian. It's going to be fine. So we still didn't go and boost this because we're spending our points elsewhere. But we got to deal with these problems as they come up. Um, I might not go and spend anything else right now. Fuel subsidies, electric car initiative. This is 
pretty expensive to boost up. We got our cycling campaign, which wasn't maxed? Why didn't we max this when we started it? Seems weird. Oh, no, I guess it's bike subsidies we ran. Cycling campaign was already in existence. Um, it's only going to cost us one to max it out. It doesn't make much of a difference, but let's go ahead and do that anyway. Car emissions limits. So this does not count, cost us very much. It does have a giant boost on environment, the environment and increases electric car transitions. Cuts down CO2 emissions. The motorists don't love it, but they don't, it's not like the worst thing in the universe for them. You know what? Let's do that. I'm very happy with that. And I use exactly the amount of points we had left over. I think that's going to be very good. Naturally entertaining. Is that me? I'm naturally entertaining? Our country's celebrated naturalist. Oh, I've done it again. The latest video documentary series, Global Smash Hit. Excellent. I mean, maybe it's a... Who's our environmentalist guy in Canada? David Suzuki or whatever? That's kind of cool. All right. Um, so more people are going to want to become environmentalists because of this great TV program. Environmentalists are happy. Foreign relations get a boost. Situation imminent. Media monopoly. It hasn't moved much. Actually, well, it hasn't moved at all, literally. So that's good. Polls, I mean, they are improving overall from where they were. Trustworthy. We do have a budget deficit. Liberal League is threatening direct action so it's opposition to the current government. So Liberal League uh, membership is high. They're cranky. All right, Liberals. I mean, actually, you don't hate me as that bad, to be honest. You're not that unhappy. I mean, the, the obviously the wiretapping made a big impact on them. Need support for Liberal League and the Freedom Rebellion. We did attend the great the gay wedding. We've got armed police. I wonder if there's anything else I could. Yeah, there's no term limits. Prime Minister does work differently than a president. So the mechanics are a bit different. We'd have to have term limits on um, elected members of parliament, period. Which honestly might not be a bad idea. You know what would be a good idea too? Maybe a uh, limit on our senators. Maybe get rid of the Senate. What are you cranky about? So he has some of these for the capitalists and the conservatives. And I guess I'm not making either one of them terribly happy. Well, the capitalists don't hate me. The conservatives are going to be pretty cranky though. This uh, Jack Conte might actually not be a long-term person for us, unfortunately. All right, we got the 18 points. We could scooch this up, and honestly, I think this is a pretty good idea. We're going to scooch this up as much as we can. Long-term liberalism membership goes up and religious membership goes down, and these are certainly the, the groups that we're going to be trying to keep happier. It's not... I don't know how much of a difference it made, and it did spend all of our political capital, but I think overall we're going to be happy with that change. How's our uncompetitive economy? Well, it's dipping down a little bit. Environmental protests, still on the way up. Like, what? Come on, I'm working on it. Whoa, pollution just took a huge dip. And actually, if we could get this below the uh, trigger, which seems pretty hard, like, oh, there's a trend line. Well, no, it's probably going to now flatten out some. Um, but if we could get rid of this, this would have a huge impact on tons of things. All right, ban single-use plastic. Well, um, can I access like all our demographics from this screen? I think, yes, I think I can continue from here um, because what we can do is, uh, we, I think we're still forced to resolve this before we actually get to advance the next quarter. So we could take a look at our stats, but I suspect this will make the environment less happier and will upset the capitalists, but probably boost the environment. That seems to be the vibe we're going for, so we'll ban single-use plastic. Oh, the liberals don't like that. That's true. The plastic bag tax. That's because there's no plastic bags anymore. <laughs> I didn't think of that. Interesting. Uh-huh. All right. Well, that that's okay. A good way to raise money would be to raise um, corporation tax, which would, of course, piss off the capitalists even more. Uh, the thing is, if it raises too high, you can get brain drains and things like that that can be very difficult to deal with. So I'm not looking to make that change currently. And we're still running a deficit, although it's less bad than before. It would be great if we could cut some expenses, because I'm not actually sure how many more um, sources of income we could potentially get. I could throw in some capital gains taxes. Empty home taxes. That is actually fairly interesting. This is actually a discussion that's happening in many places in the world 
um, in real life, including Canada, uh, because there's a lot of things where um, it, there's a lot of cases where it's people who are not um, are not citizens, like people from outside the country who live even primarily outside the country, but will buy a home in Canada so that they have it for, you know, like summer vacation, things like that. It does sit empty a lot. And as a result, the current, currently the Canadian housing market is ridiculous. Basically everywhere in Canada, house prices are through the roof. Uh, everything is so expensive. And especially if you're in a major, um, a major like city kind of thing. It is absolutely ridiculous how expensive it is. And it's, that's not exclusive to Canada. Uh, I know the US is the same thing. And I think that's the same situation in many places in Europe as well. Um, and so one of the proposed solutions that people have is uh, to, it, sometimes it's to prevent home ownership completely if you're not a resident of the country. Um, and uh, like, you know, it's not citizenship, but residence. Like if you are living in Canada, then yeah, go ahead. But otherwise, no. Um, and other ways to prevent it from like, you know, via weird corporate shenanigans and things like that. I don't know if any of those are good ideas. I have no idea. Economy and real estate is not my forte. I only know that these are things that people are talking about. Um, diverted profit tax. I don't want to really hurt foreign relations more, especially if I keep cutting the military. This might not be the worst thing in the universe to run for us. Because honestly, cutting down on some air travel for it would improve our, our environment a little bit. And politically is a pretty strong move. Electric car initiative. Oh, that's actually not very expensive. Huh? Oh, sorry, hybrid car initiatives. Yeah, less damage to the environment because slower speeds use electric, produce no CO2, higher fuel efficiency, less oil, uh, very expensive tax incentives to generate it. But it's not that expensive. It lowers oil demand. Environmentalists are happy. Motorists are happy. Again, largest voter block in our country. Does increase car usage, which has pros and cons. Uh, well, it's it's mostly cons. You don't want to increase car usage, but if we're doing it in a way that also lowers oil demand, it's not the end of the world. Environmentalist income goes up. More members environmentalists. The environment goes up. Higher earnings. I guess that makes sense. So people with high earnings, people with more money are more likely to buy the electric, the hybrid cars and are therefore going to be the ones getting the subsidy. But it also increases electric car transition rate, which seems like an excellent idea. I think we should implement this. This seems like a win-win-win on many different levels that we're trying to achieve. Lower that oil demand, boost the environment, keep an, um, the motorists happy. And yeah, this electric car transition seems like a good idea. All right, let's apply those changes. That, I'm very happy with that. And we're spending a little bit of money, but it should have huge dividends. Um, it is time for us to get a few of these basics. Um, oh, compulsory water meters. It's not that expensive. No one hates it. And we were a little bit worried about the water usage situation. If we just crank this up. Okay, that's not, that's not free. But it seems like a good one. And maybe we can save a little bit of water that way. All right, we're basically out of points. Just because I, if you get to a situation that start, bad things happen. At least our election numbers keep improving, you know, quarter by quarter. We're up to 24% now. Health has gotten better. Expand public right of way. As we build more houses in our country, once open land that was used by walkers and hikers increasingly become closed off and considered private property. Socialist campaigners have protested the, these changes and are calling for an expansion of protected public right away. We can take no action. Private land is private land, regardless whether it's farmland, industrial land, or someone's garden or yard. The idea that because people have taken a certain path for many years, that they should continue to have the right to trespass in private property is ridiculous. There are plenty of public roads and parks people can use to make can make use of. But we're going to expand right away. So much of our country is now private property that people's access to open countryside is worryingly restricted. I don't think this necessarily applies to Canada, at least as a whole, but certainly within certain areas. Yeah, okay. You know, Toronto, Vancouver, that sort of vibe, right? Um, it doesn't really matter to a farmer if a few walkers and hikers occasionally cross their land on a designated footpath. We should ensure that open countryside and footpaths are easily accessible to everyone. One of the things that I love about when I spend time in the UK, you know, back when we used to be able to travel, um, was that they really do have public right of ways. It's basically, there are only a very limited number of situations, at least in practice, in terms of what you'll actually encounter and experience, um, where you're not allowed to basically just, just go anywhere in the UK. They have fairly liberal laws for that, and it is kind of nice. Um, and uh, honestly, in, in North America, uh, Canada, US, I think the idea that like people can walk across your public land is so like, like, oh my God, like what? How could that even be a thing? 
which is interesting to consider. Uh, presumably action two does make the socialists happy because they're bringing it up uh, and probably pisses off capitalists. I, I don't know how this is going to affect liberals one way or another. Tell you what, we're going to say take no action because I think it might be a little bit more in line with the current Canadian situation. So farmers are happy that no one trundles across their land. Socialists are unhappy. Okay. All right. What is the situation here? We're, uh, I don't know, two fifths for a term somewhere around there. Closing on the halfway marker. Middle income people are still pretty pissed with us. And that is a large voting block. Environmentalists are starting to get very pleased with us, though. Um, and they do represent a lot of people. And actually, the capitalists don't hate us either, which is good. They don't love us. State employees love us. The poor love us. They don't represent a very large voting block. The retired love us. Again, they don't represent a very large one either. Although, um, I try to remember if this represents, like, how likely people are to actually vote. Because, I mean, in reality, you know, the retirees and things like that tend to vote a lot more than, than the Utes, for example. But I'm not sure how that's modeled in this game. All right, we got 21 points to spend. Let's take a little look at our situations here. <gasps> Respiratory disease has finally gone down a bit, probably because our environment has gotten better. Obesity, it's slowly going down, but not much. Environmental protests have finally peaked and are reducing. That's a good sign. Uncompetitive economy hasn't really moved, but a big one that I'm concerned with is pollution, and it's dramatically dropping. If we were to eliminate this situation, uh, that would be just tremendous. Our deficit has grown again. What do we want to do? Do we want to focus on the economy? I could make our education fully secular. Because you're oh, I thought you were only paying the difference, but I guess it's based on the percentage of rise oh that is different than how it used to be i don't know if we're going to spend more political capital on that labor laws the thing is we could yoink the labor laws over to pro employer and the advantage of this is it would help with our um the competitiveness of our economy drops wages lowers um membership in socialism and trade unions boosts productivity makes capitalists happier increases the working week and then pisses off these groups over here uh, uh, no, rubric first. Yeah, there we go. Uh, I don't know if that's something I want to do. Agricultural subsidies. How many farmers do we have? Not very many. Helps lower unemployment. I don't know if that's really a priority. And it's actually pretty expensive to do. I just noticed that's very expensive. Uh, we could, we could lower minimum wage. So none of this costs us anything directly. It's mostly about what it impacts and things. I do have to start thinking about the election. At a certain point, I might have to start spending political capital on electioneering stuff. percent chance to succeed if we're interviewed while driving. Okay, that's good. I don't know like how important it is to do earlier. Eat breakfast, typical builder's cafe. Good. I don't want to be safe ones right now. Be filmed feeding a baby lamb. Okay. Because yeah, I don't know if this has other impacts. We just spent a bunch of political capital on that, which I'm kind of okay with. Oh, Environmental Conservation Act. International organization committed a large amount of aid to help the environmental conservation in our country. Our valuable natural resources are suffering, so this injection of resources to fight the decline is most welcome. However, that our government needs such external support has been criticized by patriotic commentators. Uh, this is fine. We have a new major party donor. So if they become unhappy, so maybe the electioneering early is going to be good. Uh, media monopoly hasn't moved. We actually lost a percentage of votes over here. Environmental Alliance has been staging protests at the home of government officials. I mean, seriously, though. Really? Don't you love me? What's the deal, man? Oh my god, the pollution's almost gone. It's actually probably going to eliminate itself next turn because we still have a lot of policies that are starting to come in. Okay, that's going to have huge, huge goodness everywhere. All right, what we may want to focus on... Um, well, it's still, we still have half our term left. I was going to say, we might want to focus on things that improve our electability. But maybe it's not time yet. You know what? It's time. This thing is bullshit. We're going to, like, 
hardcore ban this because it's bullshit. So let's go ahead and take care of this finally. It's been too long. Done. All right. What else we got? Um, I like public service tends to have a lot of good cheap things that have huge impact. Like um, these, uh, these eye tests, for example, are really good. Poor are happy with it. The capitalists let so. Um, which is, I mean, I guess they they don't like their taxes going to it. I suppose that makes sense. I mean, the, the people who run the eye um, doctor facilities are going to be happy with it because more people are going to come in to get the eye test and they can build the government. Socialists are happy. Poverty goes down. Poor income stays the same. I guess it would... Yeah, it's interesting. You can't actually see a change either way. Retired like it. And um, health goes up. And it doesn't cost much at all. So we're going to go with free eye tests over here. Lovely. Do love these public services. Desalination, I believe... So this hurts energy efficiency because, uh, yeah, I guess it's energy intensive and expensive. It would help free up our water problem, but we're hoping not to have to worry about this. Um, free parenting classes. Isn't that expensive? And parents are one of the groups that aren't terribly happy with us. Boost population, which is interesting. That's not bad. School vouchers can get very expensive. Lowers racial tension, increases liberalism. There's a racial tension situation. Yeah, see, I kind of disagree with this. Um, Cliff Harris, the person who uh, works, uh, who, who develops, like, who runs Posit Heck and therefore makes Democracy 4, I think has a very rose-colored view about the racial tension situation in Canada. Admittedly, it's not as bad as some areas, like some places in the world. Some places, it shit's real bad, yo. And shit ain't real bad in Canada. But it would be disingenuous to say that it isn't at least some bad, especially for some people. For some people, it's real bad. So I think that's a kind of a rose-colored view of Canada that is represented by maybe our international public image uh, that would be highly disputed by certain groups of people. Uh, but it does mean we really don't have to focus, in this game at least, on uh, dealing with racial tension because apparently it's 0%. Sure, let's go with that. Mm -hmm. um, youth social clubs. Parents go up, crime goes down. I mean, the group, the percentage of people who are parents don't represent that much anyway. Cyberbullying. Okay. It's cheap. Parents and youth get boosted. I don't know. Sure. We'll run that to the max. And if it's policy I want, why wouldn't I run it to the max? Uh, for, especially this. It's so cheap. What the heck, right? Um, Food stamps is a lot trickier because it's very expensive. It would be kind of nice, but I don't know. Clean energy subsidies. I think we should run this. Um, they're very expensive, though. But one of the other things, knowing the developer, big fan. Uh, actually, big fan of micro generation, which might be a tax incentive. It used to be like a really good thing to run. I don't know. Was it an economy? Maybe it's already running. Maybe it's not there anymore. Oh, mandatory microgeneration. That's interesting. Maybe I already have a microgeneration policy. Um, I wonder what category they'd be under. Not law and order. I wouldn't think public services. Could be tax related. I don't see anything at a glance. Um, I don't know if it would be economy, although there is certainly some that state energy company. These smart meter programs. Oh, I wouldn't mind boosting this. It gets quite expensive mm, for maybe mediocre returns. Okay. Universal doorstop collecting. Doesn't increase our cost that much. And you know what? It's very on brand with what we're doing. Done. Now let's take a look at our cabinet over here. How's Jack doing? Jack's this guy over here at 0.8. Yeah, we're uh, we're gonna have to replace you there, buddy. Before you quit and generate some, uh, some bad press. So this is our economy role, which unfortunately no one like, you'd have to go way down here to do it. Conservatives and socialists. Let's let's go with Remy. He gives us 1.9. It's not his preferred job, but motorists and liberals should mostly be happy with us, so he should keep 
he should stay pretty good for us. So we're gonna spend one to do that because if you do have a minister quit on you, it looks real bad and we don't want that. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and um, we're gonna put a cut in here. We might make some more policy changes uh, because we do have six. Most likely we'll just click to the next month uh, when we come back, we shall see. Hmm. I mean, this is this is kind of straight up good, except for the Patriots. Although having more ethnic minorities can lead to more racial tension, but you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go and spend the max six points over here, and doing that. Yeah, that's gonna be good. And improved foreign relations is gonna do wonderful things for us. Um, that's immigration. There's foreign relations. What does it look like this over here? So we took a little bit of a dip with some of our um, with a with a random event, for example. But overall, we're on our way up for foreign relations, which is great for tourism. Um, it's good for a lot of things, occasional foreign aid. Uh, having good foreign policies re or foreign relations is really good for our economy um, and reduces certain security risks. So that's going to be okay. All right, so we'll put the cut in here. Folks, thanks a lot for watching. I'm going to see you guys next time. Bye-bye.